ever felt that your Gundam just wasn't penisy enough? Well, now it can be with the new, well, I guess not so new at this point, Premium Bandai Master Grade Mission Pack Zero Type and U Type, I guess that U stands for urethra, <laughs> because now you can take this and turn it into a dick. As usual, a video like this, a premium Bandai release that came out a couple of months ago, this video would not have been possible without those absolutely fantastic people over at Baiye. So if you do want some premium Bandai or rare kits of your own, I have always found every single thing I've been looking for on Baiye. So you can check that link down there in the description. And I've also put a link to a video on how to shop through Baiye and save some money anyway. Here we go. Okay, so I will mention in here, this is just an expansion, so you do need the Gundam F90 for using with this, which is sold separately. There's not much building to do in here. This is more of a pamphlet style set of instructions. And then we've got one, two, three, and four bags of plastic. So this shouldn't take too long to get built. So here we go. And there we go. There is everything in the box put together. So as for what these are actually called, what we've got up front here is the O type, which is the commander type. In here, we've got the enhanced rifle, a beam saber rack, a backpack, and some large blade antennas. And in the back there, we've got the main event, which of course is the U type. That is the breakaway atmosphere type. However, that is U, I'm not sure. I'm gonna stick with urethra maybe, but this is pretty damn cool, I have to say, even though it's very ridiculous. As well as that, we've got some stickers. They're upside down right here. I'll pop them up on the screen as to what they look like before I stuck them on. These are just on the lenses, some sensors on the front of the U-Type breakaway atmosphere type, as well as on the scope sensor section of the rifle. Next up then, we've got a bunch of water slide decals, which is quite common in premium Bandai kits. These are very nice, simple, and I'm sure they'd look awesome on, but sadly that won't be happening in this review. Anyway, you're gonna need to bring your own Gundam F90. I've got Gundam F92 here, as well as the standard Gundam F90. I will mention once again, these are premium Bandai only kits, so if you wanna check out either of those reviews, feel free to. They are absolutely mind-blowing kits feel absolutely nothing like standard Master Grades whatsoever. The style of build is completely different. There's an almost rubberiness to the plastic which gives it a unique feel. And honestly, these barely feel like Bandai kits whatsoever. Once again, I highly recommend trying at least one of them out. But for this review, I'm just gonna stick to the Gundam F90, the standard one, because that's what the instructions says to use. So anyway, first up there is all the parts that make up the commander type, so let's get them attached. I've got the Gundam F90 here in the back with most of the covers removed off the hard point, so he's ready to go. And it turns out I'm also gonna need a right hand holding hand from the standard Gundam F90 kit. I'm also gonna pull out the beam rifle for the sake of comparison with the new one. Okay, so we need to lose the beam sabers from the backpack, off they come. These now connect into this new rack segment that's gonna go on the side skirting armor. That then pops onto this particular side skirt right here. This little segment down here is a new backpack section. Pops on just like so. The blade antenna segments now attach back here into those new slots and just a bit of trivia in case you don't know, that thing that most people call a V-fin on the front of the Gundam's head, that is actually called a blade antenna. V-fin is a completely made up non-official term that I think is used by Western fans. Either that or they call it Tsuno, which means horn. But V-Fin, totally made up. Next up then, let's prep that hand for using with the new rifle. There is a quick comparison of the new commander type rifle beside the standard beam rifle. Similar, but a bit different. And we've got a lot of nice new colors up front here, which is the white and the blue. They also both use the exact same magazine, or I assume it's an E-cap. There's the one off the standard rifle, pull it out. There's the new rifle, pop it in. So completely compatible, just a slightly different shade of gray. Let's put the original bag in. Also that little bit of a nub style peg there, that is the same three millimeter hole we have on the rest of the kit. So it does mean if you want, you can mount some spare E-caps just like so. So there we go, looking awesome. And I have to say that because this kit is made out of a kind of grippy style plastic, I think ABS, I'm not necessarily sure, but that does mean it has no problem whatsoever dealing with such a massive and awesome beam rifle. We also have a bit of a sliding gimmick here, which allows it to move up like so. And that is one bad ass looking beam rifle. So anyway, there's that full 360 spin of the O-Type Gundam F90. Once again, this is the commander type. We've got some big blade antennas up on its shoulders there, attached onto that brand new backpack. 
We also have that massive new beam rifle, as well as some waist-mounted beam sabers. I will mention that some of the covers are not on the different hard points where they should be, like on the front skirting armors, the side of the legs, and the side of the arms. Those should be there, they should be blue and yellow. This one does look quite awesome, and compared to a lot of the other mission packs, this one is a little more subdued and a little bit more normal looking. I'd be more inclined to use something like this personally than some of the crazy ones, like the one we're about to take a look at right now. So now moving on to the other mission pack, which is that one back there, which is the Atmosphere Breakaway, or should I say Breakaway Atmosphere Pack. I've got the F90 stripped down once again. This back here, it splits up into a whole multitude of parts. So we've got the rocket section at the back. We've got the nose section up front, which has a cool little bunch of rails in there, which the instructions refers to as the fairing cover or the fairing. We then have these little segments for the hands to hold onto. We've got two of those for the two hands. We've got these segments which will attach into the legs and this big old part which is a backpack. Now let's get it all attached onto F90 here. So no need to remove the beam sabers this time, but we do have to take the tops off of these hard points up on the shoulders. Bring those shoulders down a bit. We've got to detach these two pieces off this backpack part. They then attach up onto the shoulders like so, and those are to mount the backpack part onto. So we need to line this up with both the backpack and those new shoulder segments, as well as into these segments here on the butt flap that attaches on then like so, keeping the whole robot in position, grabbing that nose segment from back there, and that has attachment points down here for the front skirting, up here for that new backpack that then all goes on just like that. Get everything lined up. Looking pretty ridiculous. Honestly though, I kind of just want to leave it like that. The ultimate Gundam form ever. It just looks like the front of a plane with legs and arms. Kind of like Macross, but not really. Next up, we've got some segments for keeping the legs lined up. So everything just supports the robot itself, keeping it all in position. There we go, there is one. Flip them around, attach, arm up, and into the leg like so. Again, still looking fairly ridiculous. Next up, we've got these handle segments to protect the arms. These go into the holding hands, as simple. Then they attach on to the backpack, like so. Exact same then on the other side. Every step of this procedure is making this look more and more ridiculous as it goes along and now we're finally onto that main event. We have some removable flaps round back. Those are for using with this support girder that just pops in like so to keep the weight. Because it goes without saying this is going to be super back heavy and finally the rocket attaches into the backpack. Now check that out. Now that is peak Gundam performance right there. Honestly, what can I say? This is one of the most unique looking Gundam accessories I have ever seen. Mainly because the legs sticking out like that doesn't really make much sense. That's not very aerodynamic looking at all. When they, you know, mount it lengthways going with the rocket, you know, to uh, lay off on that drag and whatnot. This, uh, this is, uh, hmm. Unique, definitely. I love how the Gundam is just in there, in the most awkward pose ever, just standing stuck inside of a rocket. That is the greatest. I just was jumping over to the Gundam wiki there to get a bit of context for this thing, and yeah, the U now makes sense. It's the uplift type. Why didn't they just keep it as that? You know, breakaway atmosphere does not start with a U. However, all we get on here is a line drawing and a completely empty article, so I'm assuming this right here never got out of the concept phase and I can kind of see why. I mean seriously, can you even bend its legs back? Just to, you know, make it make a little bit more sense? There is some articulation here, but you know, I'm kind of like bamboozled as to why. This is weird. Seriously though, I'm no engineer, but I don't think this like flying up into the atmosphere would really work. Those legs would take a beating. Seriously, this is so bizarre. It's a rocket with a Gundam standing the most awkward. I can't get over this. Honestly, I kind of love it just because it is so daft. Anyway, let's give it a spin. So anyway, that is the full 360 spin of this and that is also it for the review. Usually I don't rank 
accessory kits because they are not really a kit you can use on their own and that's the same as what's going to happen right now. However, this thing is ridiculous. But once again, this is what I feel premium Bandai kits should be. These are definitely premium level add-on kits that the vast majority of people probably would not want. The commander type mission pack, that is very basic and doesn't really change the Gundam F90 all that much. And as for this, this is one of the most ridiculous things I have ever seen. A Gundam in a rocket. And that is why I love it. I mean seriously, who is going to spend the money on the premium Bandai Gundam F90, then spend the money on this pack and display this as opposed to the already awesome looking Gundam? You know what, maybe I will. Just to show this thing the love that it deserves. So yeah, if you ever wanted your Gundam to look a little bit more dick-like, a little bit more rocket-like, then this is something you cannot pass up on. Seriously, I love this. This is going on my shelf forever. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll be seeing you next time.